A very good noon to all of you. I welcome you to this session, the part 4 of this session, 50 must know vocabulary words. I hope you've attended the first three parts and I hope you've learned quite a few new vocabulary words from those parts. Continuing with this, today we are going to focus on contextual vocabulary. Vocabulary where some context, some surrounding words are given to us, how to attempt such questions. Okay? Good noon, Nishang. Good noon, Sonali. I hope you're doing well. Good noon, Pratyasha. All right. So let's begin. This is our agenda for the day. As I've already told you, we will learn some new words through fill in the blanks, which is a part of contextual vocabulary. Okay. <coughs> So, in such questions, as I have al already told you, the surrounding words play an important role. So, please read them carefully. Look at the tone of the word that is required in the blank, whether it's a positive word or it's a negative word. Right. So, look at the tone of the word. Pay attention to the surrounding words. And always, always eliminate. Right. So, these three things, following these three things will help you in such questions. So, here's your first question. Let me see what you say here. Yes. Good noon, Gautam. Okay, what do you say? Sonali says D. Okay. Ishank also says D. Others. Just two responses. Gautam, Pratyusha, what do you say? When I says D, all right. So, I think that you have missed out on something, right? I told you to pay attention to the surrounding words. When I say that, to pay attention to the surrounding words, I also mean to see the structure. As in, is there a cause-effect relationship there? Is there a contrast that has been drawn there? Is one idea simply stated and probably continued? So, if you see this, there's an as here. A growing number of these expert professionals slash having to train foreigners as the students end up. So, this is the cause. This part here is the cause. As the students end up dash, the teachers who have to then unhappily, unhappily contend with no jobs at all or new jobs with drastically reduced pay packets. So, this is the cause and this is the effect. So, if they are replacing, if supplanting means replacing, I'm sure that's why you've said that D is the answer. So, if these students end up replacing, if this is the cause, then what will be the effect of it? Will these expert professionals train foreigners? Will they, will they have to compulsorily train foreigners? Or, and even if they have to do, won't they resent training foreigners? So, A is the answer. Good Vedant. So, the effect here is that because, you know, these students end up replacing the teachers themselves, the teachers resent, the teachers begrudge, the teachers do not like training these foreigners. <coughs> okay. So, A is going to be the answer, not D Delhi. A and D were close options here. So, if you see here, in such questions, the words are not going to be very challenging as such replacing, supplanting, assisting, very common words. You just have to pay attention to the surrounding words a lot. Okay. And then of course, eliminate. I hope this makes sense to you. Good noon, Shri. All right. Let's have a look at this. So, five options here. Let me see what you say. 
similar words, commonly confused words. So, which is the best option here? Okay, I've got two responses, others? So D, E, B, this is what I've got so far. B again, okay. Let's have a look. So first of all, I want more of you to be responsive, right? I can see that you are being a little lazy. Some of you, some of you are being a little hesitant. No, that won't do when it comes to VARC, right? So let's have a look. A, D, B, E, pretty much everything I've got except C. Okay. So traveling is my hobby. Today in the Himalayas, as I drag my feet through the dash, so you are dragging your feet through something. Okay. I cannot but think of the same time last year when I was negotiating the thick. So pay attention to this word thick, then drag my feet, pay attention to this. To the thick dash of the Ganges delta, okay. Or for that matter, the time I spent with my children, dash about in the waters of the Arabian Sea. Dash about in the waters. What do you do? You play in the waters, right? That's what this person is reminiscing. The time I spent with my children, dash about in the waters of the Arabian Sea. So, the word for, you know, this is sloshing about or splashing water. Sloshing about means splashing water on each other, right? So, either this or this is the answer. It's either A or E. Now, you must be thinking, but why not slushing? Slush actually means this melted ice, okay, partially melted ice. Like we have slushies. Right. So, uh, for instance, if you go to KFC, they have something called crushers. So, uh, it's part ice, part water and it's a sweet drink. So, slush means partially melted ice. So, probably this person would not play with his children in slush. Right. And therefore, these two are eliminated. Sludge. What is sludge? Yes. <coughs> so, here this person is talking about a delta. Right. So what is delta? If you know the concept of it, basically when uh, uh, because of the joining of rivers, a triangular shape of mud is formed. Right. Uh, that is called a delta. So this uh, this, you know, triangle contains uh, wet mud and such soft, thick mud is called sludge. OK, so sludge is soft, thick mud. And because we are talking about a delta here, sludge is appropriate here. OK, so. This is eliminated. This is eliminated. Now, now this person is in the Himalayas. So, of course, the Himalayas will have ice, will have snow, right? So, as I drag my free feet through the slush, through the partially melted ice, through the partially melted snow. That's the uh, logic that needed to be applied here. I hope this makes sense to you. A is our answer. So, this category of questions is called common confusables. You can be asked these questions in the form of fill in the blanks as I did here, right? You can be asked these in other forms as well where a sentence is given to you, then uh, two words are given for that sentence. You are asked, okay, which word fits better, right? This could also be the form. Okay, let's go to question three then. Let's see what you say here. Easy question.
Okay. What do you say? I've got two responses. Okay, excellent. So this time, all of you are correct. This is the answer here. Into the limited space given him, a headline writer must compress. So I keep underlining what I think is important for me. Right. So limited space, compress the dash of the news and he must do it without dash. So I am talking about the responsibilities of a headline writer. Right. This person is writing the headline and the headline will not have all the news. It will not have the totality of the news. Right. It may have a synopsis, but even a synopsis is a little longer. Even a summary is a little longer. Right. But we'll keep, keep this in the uh, running. B is eliminated. The bias of the news does not make sense. And he has to do it without reservations would mean without any restraint. No. Every person who's writing in the newspaper has to exercise some restraint. We can't express our personal opinions there. Right. But we have to do it. They have to do it without ambiguity. The person who's reading it should be, should clearly understand what this article is going to be about. So that's why D Delhi. Good. All of you got this correct. Okay. How about this? So what do you say? B Bangalore, all right. B, okay. Okay, so a lot of Bs here. Let me see. Okay, so absolutely correct. See, uh, rather than, again, we had to focus on this rather than. That means it is designed for scholars and research workers rather than for a lay person. That's what I want to say here. Right. Omniscient therefore cannot fit. What is omniscient? Yes. Who will tell me? She is knowledge. Omni means all. So, um, an omniscient person is an all-knowing person. Someone who knows everything. Right? An all-knowing person. For instance, in a lot of religions, it is said that God is all-knowing. God knows everything. So, God is omniscient. Right? Okay. Assiduous. <coughs> Assiduous. So, someone who is very hardworking and diligent is an assiduous person hard working and diligent such a person is an assiduous person so um, rather than for the assiduous dictionary user does not create that sort of a contrast that i want to create with scholars and research workers isn't it casual however creates that contrast so i wanted to create a contrast here and casual does that Moreover, compiled is a better term for a dictionary rather than assembled. Assembled is used more for electronic parts, let's say, for parts of a machine. Compiled, on the other hand, means that you take written material from various sources and put it in one, so one source, which is the job of a dictionary. Yes, correct, Sonali Vedant. Your answers for omniscient were correct. Some other words from omni. I think omnipresent is something that all of us know. Omniscient, we just learned. There is omnipotent and omnicompetent. Omnicompetent. So, omnipotent, I think, if you know the meaning of potent, you would realize it means all powerful. Potent means powerful. So, all powerful. Then, omnicompetent 
someone who is very multi talented right a, a versatile person who is multi talented who is who can who is you know uh, who can exercise competence in a lot of things that person is omni competent right so these are some words and b is our answer all right how about question 5 okay let's see what you say uh sorry guys just give me a second yes we are on this question so i got d c a all right so something went wrong with my powerpoint uh omni word shri yes it's not an accepted word in the dictionaries but i have also read about various when when i read about various personality types so it's an emerging term omni word people who have trouble in you know balancing their introvertedness and extrovertedness so sometimes they are all introverted sometimes they are all extroverted they experience extremes like that okay so d c a that's what you've told me now let's have a look at what the answer is hungarians may grumble about the difficulty of acquiring cars but they point quickly to a compensation so what is that compensation the dashed look of their tree lined avenues right so the compensation of not being able to have cars is this that they have tree lined avenues right and the absence of dash exhaust fumes and there are no exhaust fumes also when there are no cars so the absence of superfluous would mean redundant so i am happy that nobody said a no okay one of you said a all right uh, superfluous means redundant so okay you are thinking that uh, exhaust fumes here are redundant see actually <coughs> this means something that is over and above what is required that is the meaning of superfluous over and above what is required but when i talk about exhaust fumes the better word for the, this would be let's say noxious or poisonous right uh, something that is harmful for us and that's why c is our answer okay good those of you who said c two of you said c now the uncluttered see if there are cars you must have seen this in your lanes uh, if if let's say you live in independent houses cars create such a cluttered look to the lanes don't they so when you have tree lined avenues it will have an uncluttered look it will not look congested and cluttered so c is our answer here now otos otos is something that is not practical something that is impractical in nature is otios so i do not need a negative word here i rather need a positive word here tone and therefore b is eliminated okay absence of copious again copious means in excessive amounts so to be fair a and d are very similar right placid and tranquil are synonyms superfluous and copious are synonyms so if uh, 
this had to be the answer no then this could equally be the answer that means probably neither of them is the answer this is also a logic that you can apply when you're really confused in a question when you find it really challenging if two options are very very similar right in vocabulary probably neither of them is the answer right so c is our answer here placid is again something that's calm placid is calm soothing tranquil also means calm composed right noxious is harmful something that is harmful for your body is noxious okay <coughs> hope this makes sense to you yes no any query please ask all right then i'm assuming this is clear let's go to question 6 yes Because tree lined, tree ka lines hai, right? Trees are lined neatly. Okay, trees are arranged neatly in a line, okay? So, there is no clutter in their lanes. Okay, so uncluttered tree lined avenues. If cars were present, they would have become cluttered. Right? Yes, obnoxious and noxious are related. Nox means something that is harmful. Nox means something that is harmful. Okay. Nox also means night. Nox also means night. But one meaning of nox is harmful also. Right. So, noxious, physically harmful. This is a term. Noxious, you'll encounter this being used in medicine a lot. Right. Doctors. Obnoxious has to relate with someone's nature. Somebody who's mean. Okay evil that person is obnoxious <coughs> okay what is debasement debase hanji when you uh, when something gets debased in a way it is uh, getting degenerated Okay, uska base lower ho gaya. You can learn it like this. Its base has lowered down, right? That's what we can say. So, to debase someone would be to insult them, right? And if there is a uh, reduction in the quality of something, then we will call it uh, that, okay, this thing has experienced debasement, right? So, debasement is degradation. I can comfortably say that. The degradation of democratic freedom is dialogue. No, dialogue is rather the essence. So, I need a positive word here. Okay, because of this dialogue, I need a positive word. Debasement eliminated, alienation eliminated. The pinnacle, okay, this can also fit. The pinnacle of democratic freedom is dialogue. But the second one does not fit here. Restrained interchange, no. Unrestrained, unhampered, untrammeled. They are all synonyms. Unhampered, untrammeled, unrestrained. So, C is going to be the answer. <coughs> so, you see that your contextual vocabulary questions are a mix of, uh, you know, uh, easy and difficult questions, isn't it? So, some of them are so easy that, one option will be the only one that have, that'll have both the blanks correct. For instance, this was the case here, right? Whereas some of them, uh, because they have common confusables, they can be challenging. So you need to prepare for all such kinds of questions. For currency, Vedant, we usually say depreciation or devaluation. Okay, so the term that we use is depreciation or devaluation. We can use de debasement in order to indicate that, okay, it's... Uh, uh, purchasing power has gone down or in a so that in a way is a degradation of its quality but in economics in finance these are the two terms that are used depreciation or devaluation depending on whether you have a floating exchange rate system or you have a fixed exchange rate system you can find out more about this floating and fixed exchange rate system okay all right let's talk about another question interesting question I agree, Shri. Sometimes the context makes our life very easy.
Okay. What do you say? I've got three B's so far. Others. Okay. All right. Her novel published to universal acclaim. What is acclaim? We say this, no, that this is a critically acclaimed movie. Critically acclaimed critically praised movie. So, acclaim is praise. Right. Her literary gifts acknowledged by the chief figures of the Harlem Renaissance. Her reputation as yet dashed by envious slights. Envious, jealous, slights, insults. So, sometimes people insult you because they are jealous of you. Okay. So, that means the point that we are talking about, the time point that we are talking about, her reputation had still not been tarnished by such jealous insults. Those were yet to come her way. They hadn't really come her way till then. Hurston was clearly at the dash of her career. So, she was the at the peak of her career. I think this is very easy to identify. And the only option that mentions the, the word peak here is option B, which says Zenith. Ebb is a low point, right? Brink is the edge of something, not the peak. Extremity again is a negative word. I needed zenith, which is only there in option B. Okay. <coughs> Confused between B and D. See, for the option, uh, for the first blank, no. All these fit. First blank me to sab a sakta hai. As yet undamaged. Undamaged is again slightly less appropriate, but untarnished, untainted, unmarred. Any of these can come. So, you have to rely on the second blank here. So, was clearly at the brink, when you are at the, at the brink of something, you know, you are being pushed towards something. I am at the brink of my patience right now, if I say that. That means I am going to become, you will see me getting angry or impatient at any point of time now. Okay. So then, extremity. Extremity is again, we don't want extremities in our life. It's a negative word. For instance, we just talked about omnivert. This person experiences these extremities of ambivertedness and, sorry, introvertedness and extrovertedness. Right? So, extremity of her career, no. Negative word. Zenith, the highest point. Pinnacle, the highest point. Okay? And what is the lowest point? Yes, Sri. Good that you uh, made that connection. What is the lowest point called? So, the opposite of zenith or pinnacle. <coughs> the word for that is nadir. This is how it is pronounced, nadir. Okay. So, nadir is the lowest point of something. Okay. Hope this makes sense. Pinnacle, zenith, nadir. The opposite. We learned these words. Good, Shri. Okay. Question 8. Okay, C is what I've got, others, imagine these experiments were never carried out, the work was non-existent work, 
So, okay, one of you says A. Is it an instance of comprehensive research? Comprehensive is something that covers a wide range of things. That is comprehensive. That cannot be the answer. C is our answer here. The research was out and out fraudulent because these experiments were never carried out. So, fraudulent, deceptive. Right? What is the meaning of this word taught to us? Yes, uh, I hope I have spelled it correctly. Taught to us. I think there's an uh, there's an extra U there. Just a second. Let me just. Ah, taught to us me U B I gaya par. So I have added that U here. What does this mean? An act of taught. We use this in law. See, ideally, taught to us means something that is twisted. Ideally, it means something that is twisted. Okay. But in law, we use the word taught to talk about a fraud, okay, an instance of fraud, fraudulent activity, right? So, uh, here it, it is an instance of taught, an instance of fraudulent research and these were deliberate, deliberately deceptive. They were meant to deceive you, to trick you, right? Okay, so I hope this is clear. C is the answer here. The other words were easy, right? Erroneous nahi hai. Erroneous means it's, it has some mistakes. So, erroneous can't fit here. In case you were wondering about this in the first blank. This means, okay, it has mistakes, but here it's it was never carried out itself. Okay. Now, let's see what you say here. Okay, what else? All right, so I've got all C's. I was uh, thinking, okay, one or two of you would say A, but very happy. That means you read the surrounding words clearly. We were amazed. When would you be amazed? When something unexpected happens. Yes, we were amazed that a man who had till now, here to four means till now. Okay, that a man who had till now been the most dash of speakers could in a single speech electrify an audience, electrify, okay, mesmerize your audience and bring them cheering to their feet. So, this person galvanized, galvanized is a synonym, okay, this person galvanized the audience, filled them with energy, electrified them and brought them cheering to their feet. So, we would be amazed when this person was not really masterful or accomplished, that's when we would be amazed. Otherwise, it's a usual thing. So, see, pedestrian. When somebody is a pedestrian speaker, they're very unoriginal, unimaginative. Right? That is when we call them pedestrian. Unimaginative. So, that's why <coughs> C is our answer here. Auspicious does not fit at all. Auspicious is an occasion where you know, the uh, gods are in your favor, right? A favorable situation is an auspicious, uh, a favorable occasion is an auspicious occasion, right? So, does not fit. Okay, because we were talking about deceptive in the last uh, question, some words came to my mind that I want to share with you. Specious, casuist and sophistic. Okay. Uh, what do they mean? Any idea? 
स्पीशियस कैजुस्ट एंड सोफिस्टिक सो आई हैव गिवन यू अंट दैट बिकॉज वी वर डूइंग द वर्ड डिसेप्टिव दैट्स वाई दीज केम टू माई माइंड सो दैट मीन्स दिस मच इज क्लियर दैट दे आर ऑल नेगेटिव वर्ड एंड देव समथिंग टू डू विद डिसेप्शन इज इंट इट दिस मच इज क्लियर टू अस सो कैन यू टेल मी फॉर वॉट डू वी एग्जैक्टली यूज दीज टर्म्स वॉट वुड बी कैजुस्ट इन नेचर येस एंड इज इट रिलेटेड टू कैजुअल Hmm. So we use these words for arguments. Okay. So, uh, I okay. I wrote it as causist. I am sorry. This is casuist. Okay. Ca casuistry is the noun. Casuist is the adjective. Right. So, uh, a casuistic argument, a sophistic argument, a specious argument. These are such arguments that sound correct, but they are based on unsound reasoning. so they sound correct superficially but their underlying reasoning is unsound so they may mislead the listener right so they sound correct but they are based on unsound reasoning yeah uh, shri yes there is a way in which pedestrian is linked to the pedestrians who walk on the road so uh, these pedestrians also in a way they are walking on the road you would find them on the road so something that is found on the road right would not some would not be something very original so to say would not be something very unique so to say and hence that pedestrian is related to the pedestrian walking on the road because a pedestrian walking on the road is also considered to be something commonly found yes so from sophistry comes sophistic right so a specious argument which on its face will sound correct superficially correct but will be based on unsound reasoning right so let us say <coughs> i'm just giving an example here right uh, let's say i spend about 300 crores rupees okay i am the government and i spend about 300 crores rupees on building a statue so i build a huge statue and then i say that you know uh, spending and there are pressing medical needs in my country medical infrastructure is let's say poor medical infra is poor similarly education infra is also very poor so i justify building this huge statue by saying that you know this statue has also generated livelihood it has generated employment because so many people come to see this statue so there's tourism because of that tourism revenue comes then it is generating employment for the people who have shops near this statue so i justify it using this argument now on the face of it it's it's a very sound argument right employment generation tourism revenue generation but if you look at the economic perspective economics is all about allocation of scarce resources our resources were scarce here they should have been spent on more pressing concerns right okay which would benefit us in case of medical emergencies or uh, national international emergencies such as covid so i hope you understand that uh, such arguments are specious casuistic sophistic arguments okay welcome yogita welcome this is so nice to see this here this right uh, thank you for actually taking out the time and dropping by and all the very best for the future right yes a commoner pedestrian is a commoner a common person a common man okay let's come to this question then <coughs> so all those three words were synonyms casuistic specious and sophistic what do you say
history says B. Okay. But why not C? Or why not uh, A? Or D for that matter. Yes. All of you say B. So the vote is unanimous. Yes. And you are absolutely right. D is the answer. So from. See here. This the point that I wanted to make through this question that so far we have talked about the context. We have talked about the tone of the word positive, negative. And of course, we've talked about elimination. But sometimes grammar that helps us a lot. Right. So take care of these four things when you go for a contextual vocab question. Convince me to do something. Convince is followed by two. <coughs> You persuade someone to do something. Again, persuade is followed by two. So, A and C eliminated. You can dissuade someone from doing something or prevent someone from doing something. That is fine. Now, look at this. Dash with me. Hamper with me. No. Okay. Meddle with me would have been fine. Okay. When you meddle with someone, you mess with them. So, they stop messing with me. That would have made sense. But... Here I need remonstrate with me and remonstrate is always followed by with. Remonstrate is always followed by with. When you remonstrate with someone, you actually raise your objections to something. You protest in a way. That is remonstration. So, B Bangalore is the answer. Good. Vedant, Virendra, that you guys also applied that grammar logic here. Okay. So, this is how you attempt contextual vocabulary questions. I hope you learned some new words. And some new ways of attempting this, this question type because sometimes the question can be very simple. For instance, remember the first question where uh, you were saying that D is the answer but A was because we didn't pay attention to the cause effect relationship there. Right. So, please pay attention to the context, the structure, etc. <coughs> and you'll sail through these questions. In case you're interested in how uh, we teach, right, in our uh, regular classes, our classes that happen at 9 p.m., then you can uh, unlock your free trial and you'll get a three-day free access to our materials, to our pedagogy. And these are our CAT 22 toppers. I hope you saw the interviews of our IMA converts, right? We conducted a couple of interviews there. So you can watch them and learn from them. This is the new batch available in case you want to be among those toppers. This, these are the details. You can check the link in the description. Also, in order to make it accessible, we keep conducting scholarship tests. The next one is on the 25th at 11 a.m. And in case <coughs> you are thinking about whether to start taking mocks or not, this is a very common question at this stage. Should I wait till I complete a big chunk of the syllabus? Should I start taking mocks right now? If you have such questions, do attend this workshop on the 27th where these queries will be addressed. Okay. And this is an ongoing series. I'm sure a lot of you have already been attending this. We will keep conducting this series till CAT. So please attend this. And of course, you'll gain a lot from this in terms of RCs, CR, VA, everything. And we're everywhere on social media. So join us, follow us, right? And you can download our app so as to get access to the sessions that we conduct there. We conduct sessions there as well. All right, then this is it from my side. Welcome, Tree. Welcome. And thank you for attending all of you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.